Janelle, we'll get started around right around 6.30. And if you wouldn't mind, um, if you would be okay with it coming on and um, just kind of letting people know that you'll be doing it. And if we may need to give some directions on people who are interested in closed captioning. So that would, would, that, would you be okay with that? I'm usually a silent uh, participant, but um, I could give that a try. Okay, sure. we'll do what we can here. Um, Talia, I am going to make you a co-host. Okay. Talia, keep an eye on the on the um, waiting room if you. Uh, I don't think people actually have to be admitted in. I think they're just kind of coming in. But I want to open up some other documents here for us. Were you able to find how to assign me to type captions? Uh, oh, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Sorry. That's okay. Oh, it's because I assigned Talia to it. Uh, no wonder. Okay, I, I, now you have it. Okay, give me just a second to plug that in once. And, and Janelle, when um, when we had our our kind of uh, uh, review of this, there was a a link that we that um, um, our viewers could click on that would open up a new window. Do you have that link, or Talia? Do you have that link that we could share? I'll see. Paste it in the chat. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Chris. What did you ask me to do, T? I'm sorry. That's my computer. Uh, uh, um, paste in the chat the. Um, the link, maybe I have it. I should have saved it somewhere. Oh, I know where it is. All right, we have it on the agenda. Yeah, that's what I was going to go for. Okay. Okay. Nope, there it is. Six twenty-eight, Tala. You're gonna wait till six thirty to get it started because you, I think the only yeah. person that I think because you have your six right. Um, one, two, three, yeah, Chris, four, five. Kristen, Andrew. Yeah. We need Diva, or Nat, right? Or, yeah, that's correct. <clears throat> Wasn't Diva on here? Mm. I didn't see her yet. And I'm pretty sure I have it on gallery view. Chris, you just got my my mulch joke. Kaya, can you hear anybody?
Ishara can hear, Andrew can hear, Leslie, I assume you can hear, Kristen, you can hear, Kaya, can you hear anybody? Oh, now I can hear. Okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> I was saying I didn't take that long to get it. I took that long to read it. Uh, oh, that's what, that's what I meant, that's what I meant. The, I only got one response back from that. That was Talia sending me a uh, raspberries. Oh, shit. Uh, no, that was from my phone. That was like the eyes laughing <laughs> with the little tears. I thought it was a funny little joke. That was good. What was the joke? Joke said, um, "Why do ah, we geez. like mulch or something?" Is why do why do flower beds um, oh, yeah. oh, use yeah, yeah. mulch right. so you can't see they're under plants? Right, daddy joke. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, There's Diva. Sweet. But at least your hair is in green right now. <laughs> my, my, actually, it's even short. I, I cut it since you probably last saw me. Totally. I'm, I'm in, I, see it. I, I am in, uh, it's my racing, it's my racing form. Well, the last time you saw me, I had a ponytail too, so. <laughs> That's right. I like your ponytail. Okay. Yes. It's 631 and I think we have a quorum, right? Yep. So I guess uh, let's call the meeting to order. Uh, should we do quick introductions? Yeah. You're the boss, it's your okay. meeting. I think we all know one another, but just in case, I'm Talia, um, Main Street Gardener, current chairperson of the advisory committee. T. Waybright City Staff Liaison. I'll move it along. Alan, you're up. Uh, I am a citizen gardener who is interested in the gardening committee. I'm Chris Gutierrez, Main Street Gardener and Vice Chair of this committee. Andrew, you're going to have to unmute yourself if you're going to talk. Andy Lieberman, Main Street Gardener. Let's go to Kristen. I'm Kristen Michelle, site representative, Main Street Gardener. Kaya? Me, did you say me? Yes, I did. <laughs> oh, I'm Kaya, last name Cosme Dodge. I'm the site rep for Euclid, and good to see you all here. Diva? Uh, I'm Diva Houston, site rep for Main Street Garden. And very Ishara, nice to see you. Sorry to interrupt. Ishara? I'm, uh, my name's Ishara, and I'm a gardener on Main Street. Leslie? Unmute yourself, please. Margie, Margaret. Oh, hi, Margaret, uh, Main Street Gardener. Tracy. Hi, I'm Tracy. I'm not currently a gardener in the program, just a resident interested in finding ways to get involved. And Leslie, can we go back to you? Can you unmute yourself and introduce you? You're from a different place. She's still muted. You should be able to unmute her, whoever's the host. Okay. Let me see that now. Does, does this work? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm Leslie Holden from the Ishihara Park Learning Garden. So I work under Teague's offices, uh, volunteer. <laughs> learning, learning garden. Thank you. She's uh, yes, at, at Ishihara. Okay. So just one quick um, housekeeping thing. Um, the other um, person you see on here, captioner, is Jen. She is going to be typing in closed captioning. So you have a couple ways of seeing that. Um, you can, under your three buttons down at the bottom of your screen where it says more, you can click on that and open up what would either say show subtitle or view full transcript. That's one option. Um, the other option is in the chat. And in the chat screen, 
there is a link that starts with HTTPS and it goes with streamtext.net player event equals Santa Monica State sustainability. If you click on that, it will actually open up a new web browser window um, and you'll be able to follow through with the closed captioning as we go. Is that clear? Yep. All right. And um, you'll find she is very quick. And all right, Talia, okay. so, go ahead. So item two, approval of previous minutes from the March 3rd, 2021 meeting. Um, so this is the advisory committee. Did everybody have a chance to look at them? Yes. Okay. Is there any feedback, anything that we, Chris? So I'm trying to pull it up. Uh, where in the minutes we address a concern about uh, waitlisted people coming on to the advisory committee, uh, it, it implies that we were actually discussing an agendized item, which we were not. We, we just alluded to a comment because of a prior suggestion at an earlier meeting. So I just think we need to rewrite that a little bit. Um, can, you, can you tell me where exactly that I'm, was? Sorry, I'm trying to pull up the doggone thing. <laughs> and um, I think it's on the second page. Uh, okay, it says um, site, yeah, it does. <laughs> it, so the way it reads currently, it makes it sound as if that were an agenda item that we were discussing. It was not an agendized item and we were not actually discussing that possibility. I think that was a comment someone made because at an earlier meeting, which was our social gathering meeting, that idea emerged. And, and so I just don't want the minutes to reflect an erroneous discussion. So I guess I would say, have it read something like, um, someone, uh, you know, a participant Suggest, uh, suggested, I'm not sure how to rephrase that. I struggled with this myself when I was reading it. Um, unless you preface that sentence saying, uh, although it was not an agendized item, the comment, a comment with reference to uh, who was eligible, uh, you know, was made or something like that. I know I'm being clumsy right now. I'm sorry, I'm coming from another meeting. Um, All right, I'll, I'll, I will. Can we redo that a little bit? And or put it in parentheses afterwards that that, that was enough. not an agendized item. Okay. Because I think that'll unnerve some people to, to think we were discussing that. That we so were, we, oh, go ahead, sorry, Talia. Do we need to push the approval of the minutes to get it revised to next meeting or? No, it can be a friendly, it can be, uh, we can indicate that it's gonna be amended as such, and then people have considered that if we move the motion forward. Actually, we should have moved the motion before we're discussing it right now. <laughs> okay, so. I'm happy to move a motion to, to uh, accept the minutes and have it seconded, and then I'll make my comments again. So I'll move to, to uh, approve the minutes. Okay, I'll second. Okay, so now I would suggest that that sentence at least have a parenthetical uh, closing indicating that that was not an agendized item, but a, um, a spontaneous comment made by a participant. Okay. And see, so you got that right. Okay, so then we have to vote, right, to approve that. So um, all in favor of approving the minutes with that amendment? Um, Andy, yes. All in favor, Chris, yes. Kai, yes, Diva, yes. That's uh, Kristen, are you uh, voting? Um, I'm a little confused, so I'm not voting on this one. Okay. So Kristen abstains. <clears throat> okay, should we move on to three? Item three. 
Um, discussion and possible action on Park Drive site representative resignation. Uh, Lisa Olson emailed that she was resigning as site rep. Um, so we just have to formally approve it in the meeting. I can make a motion to approve it. If somebody wants to second. I'll second. Okay. Kristen seconds. So everybody in favor of accepting Lisa's resignation. I, I, okay, so we have all advisory committee members. Yes. Thank you. All right, uh, four staff updates. Sure, I'll, I'll try to be relatively quick. Um, we have uh, just, you know, you guys like to hear about the wait list. Um, I wanna say 660 names currently on there. I have, I'm going through the year 2019 applicants right now. I've done all of the previous ones over the um, uh, pandemic. So I, this, I started 2019 just to check in with all of them, see who may have moved away and see who we could remove, who's not responding, those types of things. Um, and so have removed, uh, I don't know, a dozen of them already and still have a few people who haven't responded back yet. So um, we stick at about 650. What we did find in working with our ISD department is that somehow when they changed the web page from CCS over to OSE, that waitlist link got mixed up. Um, and so we have not received any applications since the beginning of November. So I, while I say we have 650, uh, my expectation is that there are um, quite a few kind of out there in the universe that we are trying to find and get that resolved. Um, if you do have somebody that reaches out to you and says that they applied, please um, have them reach out to me so I can just hold on to their name at least and we'll hopefully have that resolved here yeah. relatively shortly. Um, <clears throat> monthly inspections, you all saw on my email recently. We've continued, to, we've always been doing them um, more for just a knowledge of <clears throat> who's being able to be active and kind of reaching out to those that we seem to be not be active so that we can make sure that their gardens are productive. Um, starting next week or starting next month or this month, actually, um, violations, egregious violations, right? You know, if, if it's something that can be easily be fixed, but egregious violations um, will start to receive uh, notices of non-compliance. We have not um, been giving those out um, for uh, people who haven't been coming to the garden. Um, those that have not been coming, we are encouraging them to, to either get back in or to consider um, giving up their garden plot. So um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, permit renewal, we... Can I ask a quick question? Do you um, have an... Do you anticipate when site reps would be expected to walk the gardens? Is that some kind of support you'd be looking for in the next six months or? I would say let's get it rolling in July. Let's plan on that. Does that work for you again? Okay. I mean, I, I think that you all know, I mean, we've all been in the gardens enough that we all have kind of seen what's going on, but I think that would be a good time to kind of restore it again yeah, as I, the new elections come up. Yeah, I just kind of, I noticed um, I was walking my little buddy through and I just realized that I, I kind of missed a lot <laughs> over the last year that I wasn't paying attention to some of the other paths. So I was just wondering. Yeah. I think it's, yes. Okay. So let's, we can aim for July. Mm -hmm. So um, um, let's see, permit renewals, still planning on at least in the beginning of June, start asking people to submit their documentation. Um, as you all know, you all approved um, um, a potential fee increase for some of the community garden plots. Um, we're still awaiting confirmation from city council on that. And um, if that gets delayed too much, um, there's a chance that we would have to just push any, of, any, any changes back a year, knowing that we don't want to delay really kind of getting permits done. Chris? I just wanted to recount for the minutes. Do you want to remind everyone what that uh, increase is for the largest plots? 
Um, I mean, I don't have it in front of me. So, I mean, if you want me to pull it back up or look for it, I, I, That's I okay. can. Yeah, I, um, I think we're going up to 150. Am I right, or is it 125? No, it would be. It wouldn't be quite that high. That would, yes, yeah, so somewhere okay. in, the, in that area. Okay, great. Um, for, Just so, for the largest of the plots. Right, for the largest. Anything plot. 125 square feet and lower would remain at 100. And again, I, I will, you know. Sorry. Well, we haven't put those into effect yet, um, and are still waiting city council to uh, approve those fee changes. So. Um, a couple of things, you know, we did have a big load of mulch that dropped down at uh, the Main Street Garden. Um, it has now been all moved in out of the parking lots. So um, that was 20 yards, moved a lot of it over to Park Drive North, Park Drive South, over into Euclid. Um, <clears throat> and a number of gardeners have gotten access to it. So that was a follow up to the compost delivery that we had through there, um, seemed to work out. All right, any issues with anybody? No, all right, fantastic. Um, and then we were able to also get a, um, we had the OSC had a little bit of um, additional uh, funding in our budget this year. And so we've worked with the uh, urban forestry team and they're gonna be going in this month and thinning out um, the sycamore trees and the uh, somewhat of the oak tree, although Alan, I'm not sure how much of that's going to be trimmed, but they're going to thin out some of it um, to really open up some of the the light that comes into those those gardens. I know that those trees were planted well before the gardens were put into place, but the, that sycamore tree and that oak tree are very dense um, and provide a significant amount of shade. So um, we'll have that going through, and I think that's about it for me. I Any have questions? a question. I have a question. That oak tree at Park Drive, isn't that a heritage tree? It is a heritage tree, correct? Yeah. So I, I wonder how much trimming they really can do. There will be a, there will be a limited amount of trimming that they'll be able to do. It really will be for the health and the safety of that tree, but also it hangs over. So, you know, they're not going to be doing any major limb um, cutting back. They will look for damaged limbs. Um, or areas that that might have um, caused a public safety. It'll it'll be you know they always say that a, a good pruning job you know you don't even notice that it's really there. The sycamore on the other hand has a really heavy branch that's starting to lean very heavily into or over Park Drive South that creates a significant amount of shade, um, and that one will be pruned probably a little bit heavier on that edge at least. Yeah, though they're natives, I don't think the sycamores are uh, heritage heritage trees. Well, they're, they're not protected. And so the and heritage yeah. trees is a program by the Urban Forestry Service where um, residents can nominate trees around Santa Monica to be added to the Santa Monica Heritage Program. Um, but, the, but that oak tree is a protected species by the state of California. Yeah. Um, and so our urban forestry team is aware of that and our um, moving forward appropriately. Okay. May 19th, for those of you at Park Drive, in case you're interested, is when the deadline is when that's happening. Am I allowed to ask that uh, since the, most of the cutting will be directly over my plot, will there be someone there to protect my plot or is it all just going to come raining down because I, <laughs> you know. Well, it's understood. We will, um, we've, I've already had a conversation with Peter, who is the lead forester on it. Um, and asked him to make sure that they take safety measures. We have um, some pop-up canopies that we may go down there. I kind of, I plan on being down there for a good portion of when they're kind of in those trees, just to make sure that they are keeping things um, away. A couple of years ago, I was worked with them on pruning the big palm tree in Main Street um, and they did a really, really good job of keeping debris, as much debris, large limbs, you know, there's definitely some fluff that flies around, um, but we will do our best to protect your plants. Okay, Alan. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Alan. Uh, any other questions? <laughs> move on to item five, uh, discussion and possible action on advisory committee operational guidelines. Are you able to pull it up? 
<clears throat> yes, you give me a second. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. Yep. Beautiful. It's a beautiful document. <laughs> Nat helped work on this. That's why he's saying that. You put that in quotes, air quotes, right? Help? Yes. Um, so <laughs> do we need to read through the whole thing again? We, we read through it. It was the last, last meeting, I think, right? Should we just do the highlight highlighted sections? Does anybody want me to read the whole thing? Yeah. Highlighted, I think, works. Just the highlight. Okay. Yeah. yeah in fact, the uh, you notes. may just allude to the administration subcommittee that we reviewed it and what our recommendations are. Yes. So these have been all of the feedback that we got in the meetings and um, kind of finishing it up in the last subcommittee meeting. Um, everything was changed to reflect task force on the environment. Um, updated the number yeah. of site reps. We updated the number of site reps. You, you want to allude to why the task force for the environment? That was uh, as opposed to the Rex and Park Commission, everyone. So we've moved departments from recreation and parks to the OSE. So we're anticipating that the task force on the environment will be the, the group that we report to <clears throat> from the OSE. So we updated the numbers. Um, and did we change anything here? Does anybody remember? <clears throat> vacancies. I don't, I don't believe so. No, that's all the same. <clears throat> uh, we updated quarterly meetings. Might want to call out C. Uh, yes. We updated. Uh, Gardner and good neighbor values and norms in a vibrant community. Um, I think we had actually updated this a little while back in one of the earlier revisions, um, but we defined it more clearly. Well, I think we have talked about updating it a lot, but it never <clears throat> actually made it all the way through is mm -hmm. I think what happened. Uh, we, think did cha we changed um, inspection support Yes, inspection support. And that's one, Go ahead, I just Chris, want to sorry. call out, that's where we, we wanted to actually have the designated, at least one designated site rep to do the walking. So for July, um, we'll have to do that at the first meeting. Because right? if we're going to resume that, we just earmark that we're going to resume walking the gardens to help you on the inspections. We just have to call out who that will be for each garden. Um, regular meetings, special meetings. I don't think we changed any of that. No. No. We did include virtual, virtual meetings meeting. down here. Mm -hmm. Added in the ability to do Zoom. Updated our committees. Yes. And we were talking about, we'll have to make a maybe a motion when we talk about the subcommittees <clears throat> on this meeting's agenda. We were talking about broadening, um, increasing gardening opportunities to more of an urban agricultural expansion, defining it more broadly. So in anticipation of that, we changed it in the operational guidelines here. And we just updated Shannon at OSE. 
and Realty and Public Works. Are there any questions, any discussion on those changes? Go ahead, Chris. I have a question. I just want to make a comment mm -hmm. uh, on the assumption we passed today, uh, because we're going to have the elections pretty soon. I guess then we'll send this to all the gardeners so that they know this is the um, role of the site, reps, et cetera. Yeah, T, do you know, um, has this document, I, I don't remember, has it been shared with the gardeners that are not on the advisory committee? It went out with the um, election notice. Okay. This updated version? I believe so, okay. yes. Okay. So they have, so at least they have the draft. Anything else? No more questions, comments? Does somebody want to make a motion to approve it? I can make the motion. I'll second it. Okay. Um, all in favor? Advisory committee, yes, yes, yes. That's everyone. Okay. Really want to thank you, Talia. Everyone you should know she ushered that through really well after I think about a year and a half or whatever. It's been like three years. <laughs> Has it been? We've all been we've all been working on it at different points over the past three years. So yes. Okay, so we're done. We're done with that one. Yes, finally. Um so timeline for nominations and site rep openings, Teak. You put out the email for people to self-nominate? I did. And May. The, uh, May 21st, I think, is what I put on there. Did I, did I, is that correct? Um, uh, I yes. don't have it in front of me, I yep. think. Yeah. <clears throat> I've received two already. Um, so do you want me to, do you want me to review, and everybody should have received a, an updated, um board roster so they should know who is staying on and who's not staying on mm -hmm. um i plan on resending the election notice back out on monday um just to kind of remind people if you are interested um either continuing your pro continuing or joining um then i need a uh, candidate statement and um i guess that's really about it a candidate statement and a picture would be nice so that i can add it to a ballot that will go out uh, i think i have it scheduled to go out um like friday may 28th um and we'll give a couple weeks for voting so what's the final deadline for ballots for you June. For ballots or for the statements? Um, for the ballots coming in. Uh, it says June, June 11th. So 11th. we'll have May 28th through June 11th. So we'll get okay. a two week period for voting. Okay, yeah, that, I guess that's what I was asking. Okay, any questions? And if anybody asks, there are four seats up at Maine, two at Park Drive, and one at Euclid. So for those of you, I think Nat is staying as already, and Nat will continue through next year. Kaya, your seat is up for election. So if you'd like to remain on, please let me know. And then at Main Street, um, I don't remember who all, but I know Talia is me. off. Andrew is, is gonna, has submitted, well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't tell you that. Andrew submitted for candidacy. Um, I can pull it up real quick. If you want yeah. to. So the people that are guaranteed that are staying on are Chris, Susan, and Chris, Kristen. They will go through June of 2022. So Talia, Diva, Andrew, and a vacant seat. Those are the four seats that are open. Um, and then uh, Nat continues through 
2022, um, but two other seats at Park Drive are open and uh, Kaya's seat is expiring in June. So if she would like to stay on, which we'd be happy to have her, um, she can re-up or sub submit uh, her self-nomination. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. All right. All right, any other questions? And if not, we'll move on to item six. Discussion and possible action on proposed changes to permit documents for 2021-2022 fiscal year. T, could you please pull up the permit? We didn't, do we have a lot of changes to the permit? No. No, right. it was mainly cosmetic. Right, so we don't have any action on that specific document, right? Uh, oh, we, there, we, we did add a few things in there. So I think we they're highlighted. The, yeah. Um, what we did was we did change anything that re re related right. to um, Rec and Parks Commission Parks. to OSE. Um, we changed things to Director of Public Works. Right. Uh, no waste or nuisance. So all the pertinent details for yeah, and we added the amount potential change in yeah. permit fees. Um, is that the correct address? Um, yeah, that city hall address. Is that yeah, yeah that, that is yeah, that's my that's my city hall address. Okay. Um, and the other thing that we added in was violation of permit and revocation was the theft or vandalism. Mm -hmm. So number nine identifies reasons why a gardener may lose their gardening privileges immediately. Um, uh, Non-resident, um, a notice mailed to permittees designated address that's not forwardable. I, I, I've never seen that happen, obviously. Um, C, we have definitely done a few of those. Those are the fun ones, I'm kidding. Um, and then D, we've added in theft or vandalism in another garden plot or to city property. I should probably change that to, well, we should, never mind. We'll leave it alone. And then I think that was it. Yes. So should we, I don't know, what do you guys think? Should we approve these individually or just do them all, each document, do them all together, all three documents? Does anybody have a preference? Um, I think we should do them individually, okay. um, just for, for clarification. Okay. Okay, does somebody want to make a motion to approve these changes? I approve. Okay, so I'll second, Kristen. All in favor? Okay, that's everybody. Okay. Okay. All right. On, um, on rules and regulations. Yep. Um, so again, just throughout, right, we updated all of the, you know, city information <clears throat> to reflect OSE, Public Works Department. Um, added this added, line in. Yeah. Why, I have a question, why does it become a recommendation as opposed to in the previous document, it said it was absolute vi revocation? Um, That's a good question, Kristen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that was intentional. I right. think so we should parallel. Thank you, Kristen, for calling that out. So it says for cause, I'm looking, I'm looking back it says the city may terminate this permit if permittee fails to comply. So there is a may in there. Okay. Um, yeah. okay. So. Um, and, and I think that was also under the subject of um, the city's absolute rights, right? In the permit. Correct. Correct. And this correct. is the rules. Oh. So I think there was a little bit of a. Um, kind of uh, subjectivity to some of the rules, you know, and how they were written. Should there be a subjectivity to it? There was, well, 
I'm sorry. No, go ahead. The, we did have a discussion about if it were immediate, would we need an appeal process to um, deal with somebody who didn't feel that was just? And we didn't settle on a, on a strict protocol yet for that appeal process. So I think that's why we left it in, in a more conditional situation. Kristen, do you have a, 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 a firm belief either way here? Um, I yeah, I believe that it should be a revocation. That there's no recommendation that it should be revocation. Uh, Kristen, we didn't disagree with you. Yeah, uh, we were just discussing how if we needed to have in place an appeal process, the timeliness of developing one, we were buying time, let me put it that way, in, in this wording. I think also there was some question, you know, we do need more time to develop an appeal process um, to be fair to how the rules are enforced. Because we have a very clear way with the violations, but then there's the other rules. So I think that's Diva, Diva, Andrew, Kaya, do you have any thoughts on this? <laughs> Nat, anybody? I can't see anybody, so. Yeah, I can't see anybody. Um... No. Why don't we, uh, my suggestion is um, we do need to agendize that whole issue of an appeal process. And uh, Kristen, we did agree as an administrative subcommittee that uh, theft was you know, a high priority uh, elimination. We were just concerned with um, uh, being able to uh, reconcile it with the, with the fact that this was the first time we had instituted this new, this new rule. Um, I see in the chat, Alan raises the possibility of tabling that as we could, yeah, and that's a good suggestion to consult the um, legal staff on the matter. Um, so we didn't wanna put the city in a difficult position. So I, I think that's a good idea is to um, table that, uh, well, I'm not sure, the problem is we need to have. You can't. We, we, no, I don't think. We, I don't think we have to table the whole issue. Uh, the wording is is you know this is in the word. This is in the rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. So, I'm still comfortable with the recommendation, and while we also seek, uh, you know, refined understanding. Kaya. We lost your microphone again. I'm gonna have to invest in a microphone for you. I can't seem to unmute her. Yeah, neither can I. I'm not, I'm not getting her either. <laughs> Uh, Teague, do you want to allude to why you felt, and we agreed with you, this was a concern to make sure we put that into the rules and regulations now and not, not hedge on that particular issue of theft? Well, if theft isn't in there, um, it's a rule that we are unable to enforce with a strict, the strictness that it deserves, I'll say that. So um, having it not in there, if it happens, how do we handle it? And it, recently we've handled it based off of what's in the guidelines and there is, was nothing in the guidelines about it. My sense is that um, if we, doesn't matter what is taken, if it's snipping roses from someone's garden without asking them, 
to me is just as big of a fence as if walking in and taking every single watermelon that you have going on. It is a betrayal of the trust of all of the gardeners in that facility. I hear over and over how much theft is going on. Things are damaged, things are being stolen. We need to change this, we theft, we theft, this, that, that. And the fact that we would have one of us doing it, for one, it, it is a, it is a, it is a, it is a, a, it's a crime, right? That is, that is a physical crime to another individual's area. And I would agree with um, Kristen on this, is that if we put it in as a recommendation, that means that, oh, we're just kind of recommending that it should happen. But, but it, I, think, I think I would agree with Kristen in that we, and, and it's not, this still has to be approved by, you know, um, the public works department completely, right? I would suggest we go hard line on it. And I think that's where we need to go. Because if we're soft lining it on it, then we're setting ourselves up for um, um, other gardeners to do other things to each other. And I think that that's a really bad um, way to approach it. So. Um. I, I will also say this, I've been involved in a number of community gardens, including Ocean View Farms and the development of dozens across this, the LA County. I wanna say, I mean, I can't say every single one of them, but the majority that I checked in with, theft from another garden is immediate dismissal from the garden program. I don't think this is a, oh, you made a mistake, right? Um, I think it needs to be, you're gone. Well, so we you just remove recommendation and then in the next rewrite of the rules, it becomes you come up with a process, an appeals process. I still think we need to have we have that we should have an appeals process in there, mm -hmm. but you know this. I, I think that we need this. We this needs to be a, a very clear going out to gardeners. If you're stealing from somebody else, you're you're going to lose your garden plot. No hands down, right? And I just think that just it, we as many complaints as I get, right? That we, we don't have cameras up. We, we really can't do much investigation of them. I mean, I'm not going out and taking tread tracks or anything like that. But if we have another gardener doing it, you know, then I would, I would, I would put solid money on it if we catch somebody that they've been doing it before. Right. Um, and, you know, this is not a, you know, one, two, three strikes you're out. You know, this is not in the same situation of, hey, you've got a few too many weeds, right? This is a, uh, to me, a serious violation of trust and the, the community building that we're creating. So if, if it's amenable to, to us all, we can vote on this uh, with the revision that uh, you just did. And you know, people who don't agree with that can decline. Yeah, let's, let's keep moving through it. Okay. And then. So, so um, a few other changes was in this building of community gardens and things. We just, we reworded some of them um, to um, be a little bit more clear. We had to take out like the Santa Monica Festival and, and some other things. So again, we still do not have community hours required, mm -hmm. um, but certainly would like people to um, assist. Um, permittees didn't change. I see interesting because here down here we have yeah. we have a real result. So now we're eating, now we're now we're we're accurate with both of them. Yeah. There's no recommendation there. Yeah. Um algebra gardens, maintenance, that all stay the same. Permit mm -hmm. responsibility stays the same. We added this one in. Yeah. started having a lot of arbors go up and getting a little thick and chaotic and uh, felt that we needed to kind of put some type of limit on them. They weren't listed in the, let me just say that they, they were not, arbors weren't specifically listed in here. And I think 
we just added it in there to kind of give us some guidance on that. And it's higher than the other uh, height limit on potted trees. Right. With the understanding that a lot of people grow, you know, like the corns or squash plants or or things or that are, you know, um, seasonally going to be a little bit taller. I mean, that, take we're obviously taking that into consideration. Um, didn't change any of these things. Did include shrubs that planted in ground shall not exceed six feet in height. So we have some rosemaries and other things that are in the ground. We want to make sure that those are not getting out of line. Uh, added on this. So we have an issue over at Park Drive South where people are starting to hang a lot of potted plants on the fences. And there was no, again, no rule or regulation on there. I was asked by public landscape to have them removed. Um, and um, we need to limit the things that are being attached. Growing plants on the fence is going to still be okay because they're not putting a significant load on the fence, um, but hanging um, potted plants, attaching shelving systems, those things um, are not going to be allowed. Here's where we added in um, some type of arbitration here. We haven't really had any, um, but we felt that, um, you know, especially in talking to James and, you know, in my past experience with, you know, Danny and Brad and Karen was that um, if somebody complained to people high enough up, they would just kind of overturn it. Um, and we'd like to have more of a formalized kind of way that if people feel they're unfairly receiving a notice of forfeiture, so they have gotten multiple notices of noncompliance, um, are accused of theft, those types of things, that they would have an opportunity to um, present their case to a group of individuals. So we've included that on there as having two city staff and three randomly selected members of the Community Garden Advisory Committee, which would give us a committee of five. I think that's the last change that we had. So a forfeiture notice would go to somebody who's caught stealing, theoretically, right? Correct. So that would be the appeal process. So we wouldn't have to necessarily be soft on the wording of theft. Correct. Okay. I did not receive any um, comments after I sent these out to all of the gardeners regarding mm -hmm. any of them. Um, okay. There were a couple of questions about clarification on things, but nobody sent me, can I stop sharing? Yeah. Nobody sent me any um, um, notification that they vast, grossly disapproved of these. Okay. Not that that means that they don't, but. Right. Okay, does anybody yeah. have any questions, comments, Chris? You, uh, Teague, do you have to run this one more time by the OSC and it wouldn't hurt to get that legal um, mm -hmm. set of eyes on, on, on this immediate forfeiture because of theft slash the appeal process? Cor I correct. I mean, I, I haven't run it by them. I mean, I've, I've shared it with James and Shannon knowing that you all had put forth some, some suggested changes or we were considering putting forth some suggested changes. So um, they know that it's coming through and you know we had agreed that you know at, at, you know Karen Ginsburg could approve off on these things before so kind of just going under the um, auspice that that you know Rick Valte would be the the would have the final say in these things. Okay. 
And it was a suggestion of Shannon and James that we add in um, the, the item on theft. Mm -hmm. um, and then just, to, you know, they like to try to give people an opportunity to have their voice heard. And, um, and so, so putting in a formalized hearing process allows us to not, you know, just say this or that, right? You know, it's, it, 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 it allows us to kind of work together as a, as a community to decide if, you know, that is really how we want to move forward. And it isn't just me like asking around. Um, and so, so um, although I would be the one that would initiate the forfeiture, um, if it does come down to it, then, you know, it's, you know, it's not just Teague being a jerk. I get enough of that. Well, and any of these rules, if they have any questions about it, James and Shannon, I mean, they everybody has seen them already, right? So if they have any changes, I guess they'll kick it back to the advisory committee. I would think. <clears throat> okay, do we wanna make a motion to approve the rule changes? I'll move. I motion. Oh, I second. Okay. <laughs> all in favor? <laughs> okay, uh, that's all the advisory committee, yes. Cool. And then, Last one is good neighbor policy. Teague, when you have a second, can you, thank you. I think next next time we have this meeting, Tali, you have to do this so you can start practicing your Zoom skills. I don't think my, um, my computer sounds like a jet I'm engine just, right I'm now. I'm just kidding. It's about um, again, to die. <laughs> Again, on this, and if you all haven't ever haven't noticed that all of the fonts have all been changed, we have now have a Santa Monica font um, that we are required to use. Um, we changed it a little, some wording. You'll see that we started adding in um, urban agricultural opportunities. So again, that was alluded to getting away from increasing gardens and looking more on, on kind of the urban agriculture focus so that felt like when we were talking about gardenings, gardening opportunities, we the focus was like, well, I don't know, community gardens and community gardens. And it really, we wanted it to be school gardens and urban farms and backyard gardens and parkway gardens and anywhere that there can be agricultural happenings throughout the city. Um, uh, let's see, most of this was, we added in kind of delivering of where things could be. Um, Westside Food Bank, Ishara, Ishihara Park Learning Garden. Um, and then those, there's that, you know, there's some new cool apps out there, Golara is one where you can, you know, sh sh share your produce. Um, uh, smoking and alcohol, we added in alcohol. It always said smoking is prohibited, but we've had a number of reports that someone's been drinking in the gardens and unfortunately when not allowed to do that. I don't drink anymore, so it doesn't really matter, but uh, I think that's really it. We did clarify, yeah. cleaned yeah. up kind of some of the language that was down in there. Um, really not much other than that. Yeah, it's, it's mostly the same. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so we have any questions for discussion? No, not much change there. Okay. So I'll make a motion to. I'll second. Kristen, all in favor? Yeah, and that's all of us. We're done with that. <laughs> We're finally done. <laughs> it's been like three years in the making. <laughs> Okay, so thank, thank you all. I know that, that to all the hard work that has gone into kind of revising these and we'll, you know, we'll, the you know, rules and regulations are always going to be, I think we're always going to find something that like, oh, wow, maybe, maybe that, maybe this, um, you know, it is a long process and, and we do think about things, obviously. When we put them. So thank you all to the group that sat and worked through there. Chris, you raised your hand because you were one of them. Uh, no, I wanted to raise my hand to just say to everybody, 
a lot of people comment on these. Talia ran a great, um, you know, if you go back two years ago. Yeah, two years. <laughs> and such. So it's not as if just this committee looked at it. A lot yeah. of people, everybody had the opportunity to weigh yeah. in. There weren't a whole lot of major changes from the last time we updated them. So a lot of it was just kind of refinement, but I think it's all in a good place now. So that's good. On, on to the fun stuff. Yes. Okay, so committee reports, uh, events. So we had one um, second Saturday social hour on Zoom. It was a little bit of a quieter one than the first one. Um, I think because we skipped a month and then, um, you know, stuff started to open up more. So I think people were like, oh, I'm not going to sit on a Zoom on a Saturday. <laughs> so there was just a few of us. Um, but it was good. It was a nice chance to connect. T, do you have any expectation of when we can get back to doing them in person? Great question. I, I was, first of all, um, do you want to do a social hour this coming Saturday? Okay. You, can... I, you know, it's the Zoom thing. It's like, I don't, yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. happy to be available, but I don't. Okay. So here, here's what I can tell you is that the current Current community gardening openings based off the LA County Department of Health have not really been updated since December. So you'll notice the ones that are posted on your site still are yeah. listed as December. They identify it as no events, no types of those types of things. I feel pretty comfortable if we wanted to set up a socially distanced gathering down at the Main Street Garden and like cordon off part of the parking lot um, and set up some tables and some chairs, I think that would be acceptable by our emergency operation um, center. Um, so if we wanted to try to do that sometime, I'd be more than happy to kind of move that forward. The way I look at it is they are having AYSO soccer games. There are all kinds of outdoor classes that are happening. Um, so as long as we are meeting those guidelines, doing it inside Main Street in that community area, I think would be very difficult for us to keep our distances from each other. But we certainly could open it up and have kind of some tables and chairs outside, um, offer people, you know, to walk through the gardens, um, you know, the public be able to kind of walk through the gardens and have a couple gardeners in their plots where they could you know, answer questions and those types of things. So if you wanted to do like a garden open house in June or something, I yeah. think that would be a great idea. I think it would be a little rushed to do it for this weekend, but- um, I agree that this weekend is too soon. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why I said June. Yeah, so I think, yeah, I think I, I would be interested in doing it in June. <clears throat> You want to try to aim for something like June twelfth, then, for like a, like a garden open house kind of down at Main Street and invite people back in. I mean, we I'm could, you know, it. we have we could put together some seed packs and maybe get some yeah. seed started, and you know, just ask people to come by, knowing that they'll have to kind of. We could even have them like, you know, they have to walk down the first row and out, and then come back around and come back in the second row and kind of, you know, weasel their way in and out. Um, it would give everybody an opportunity to kind of be out in the gardens. I mean, it's a really pretty time in the gardens. Um, you know, flowers are blooming, fruits are coming in. Um, yeah, I'm happy to do it. Yeah, okay, so we wanna aim for like June 12th and try to do something mm -hmm. out there? I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be in town, so I'm not available. So, yeah. Okay. I've been trying well, to leave town for quite some time. Go, now. go, 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 go. Okay, well, that's all right. Well, you, we'll, we'll, we'll be okay, and you, you can okay. definitely be around for the next one. You're, 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 you're helpful enough, um, doing so much other things already. Um, yes. So but, should we? But I think aim for the second Saturday would be a good one. So should we do a Zoom this weekend or no? Do you want to try? You want to do a Zoom and just see, and and we can we could try to see who might be interested in kind of helping with it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's, you, you're going to have to run it on your yeah. um, uh, Santa Monica routes. If you'll get yeah. that to me, I'll pop it out because I'm not available on Saturday. No, Saturday. I think you set them up already. Oh, maybe I did. You did. 
Okay, I'll yeah. get that out um, tomorrow. Okay. <clears throat> um, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Keep going then. Anything else on events? What about at other uh, gardens? We are going to be planning on having some um, uh, camps probably come through Ishihara Park Learning Garden. Um, but again, it's really, you know, we don't, we haven't really gotten that approval for actually hosting events at the gardens yet. So we have to kind of be a little, I'd like to maybe start with one planning session and go from, go to the next, if that's okay with you. Anything else? And, unless somebody else has is, has a hankering for doing something. <laughs> I don't, well, I don't, I don't see that that has happening. I guess it just it, it's the issue of what you just said. Is it approved? You know, and, and you know, is it anyway? It's fine to do one to start with, it, just to get our feet grounded, you know, and see where we're going. And I just think, you know, they, they just, you know, it's like you're, they're going to open gyms up to 50%. You know, it's all of those other things. Yeah. Community gardens have just not not been um, relisted a lot. You know, we're not a big economic um, factor. Um, That's because they misunderstand the economy. Food they, is ultimately. <laughs> a little bit, right? You know, it's, it's, it's one of the only programs in Santa Monica. You know, the buses were still running, but it's one of the only public programs that, you know, remained open across the state of California through the entire pandemic, right? It was listed as an essential, considered an essential program. Um, and, you know, I have continuously let public works, you know, know, you know, hey, you know, the, our gardens, there's certainly some, you know, suffered a little bit, but for the most part, you know, they served the purpose that they needed to be, which was a haven. And many of you were growing food and sharing it and, you know, using it as a, as a form of, of therapy and mental escape. And it was very important to a lot of people. So um, anyway, yeah. I'm preaching to the choir here. Okay, uh, media communication. We haven't really done anything that I can think of. We did talk about resuscitating our daily press. Um, and so I guess what we need to do is put the call out to invite people. Uh, at the last meeting we had enlisted, uh, you know, some thinking with Ken. So do we need to follow up on that? Yeah, let's follow up with Ken. Let's aim for maybe one mid, let's aim for two articles for the rest of the year and then see if we can't get it started up again a little bit more. Um, and you see, look, you know, Alan Toy, 100 pounds, right? You know. know. Um, Which reminds I mean, me, as an event, getting one of those scales in the uh, Main Street, could we do that before this uh, open house? Maybe we're weighing some of our others? Certainly, certainly. I, I have a couple extra, so. I'll that would be a really nice thing for us yeah. to commence and get a system, because each would, year is wonderful. They're yeah. doing amazing work there. It would be good as we kind of clean up that community space to kind of you know, have it available for gardeners to start kind of keeping track if they wanted to. Looks nice with that mulch on there. It does, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Still, the, if anybody, there's still mulch down there. So if anybody <laughs> needs any, it's still, still down there. Uh, okay. Are you okay so, with some of the climate cortex a little bit, Samantha? I'm asked. okay. I, at this point, I've moved probably 10 yards of it myself. So if I come back on Monday and it's all gone, I'd be happy about that. Um, I'll get in touch with Ken about the articles. Okay. Um, education? I can um, say that we just had this past Saturday, we graduated our, I want to say our fourth Grow LA Victory Garden class from the Ishihara Park Learning Garden. Oh, um, and this had 2022, I think. So the Grow LA Victory Garden is an extension of the Master Gardener program. Um, we actually had, so, and we've, it's been good for us in that we've had at least, I want to say one, and maybe at least two of our new gardeners every season have taken that class. 
it's really kind of a gardening 101. It's all been virtual, um, but it has been uh, Jeffrey Romano, who on the wait list, joined us. Um, Valerie Limbo, who's new at Park Drive. Kathy Cass took it last time, um, you know, and so it's been a really good opportunity for us to kind of get some of our newer gardeners um, a little bit of educational training. They weren't able to visit the Ishihara Park Learning Garden, but um, there's a team of six master gardeners, including myself, that have been leading it. And it's been a really, really tremendous um, uh, program. In talking to them, uh, Sarah Spitz, who you guys all might know for remember from KCRW, um, and uh, Elizabeth, I don't remember her last name, are master food preservers uh, that used to work out of the Pico Farmers Market. And that uh, partnership somehow kind of went on the wayside. Sarah claimed that the city thought she was too much of a rebel. And I was like, we welcome rebels. That's what our community gardeners are. I mean, look, do you know Randy Ziegler? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, and so they were, you know, they, they seemed a little um, disappointed that they had, hadn't had that kind of outlet and have offered, I offered if they would like to lead a couple um, uh, food preserving classes. And I think then they said they absolutely would. So um, we'll try to um, in, uh, get that going on education as well. And um, if we get the, the opening again back for Ishihara Park, um, we'll obviously, you know, kind of kickstart those third Saturdays again, which was really our kids' education programs. So. Okay, anything else on that, on education? Um, um, one other thing is that Kristen um, has been put in contact with Santa Monica College, and um, they have offered to assist with the native milkweed growing program. So Kristen, do you wanna, I don't know if you've talked to Ferris at all a little bit more about that? Uh, well, I've been communicating with him through email and um, we were going to talk on the phone, but that hasn't manifested yet. Okay. I did send him all my information that I have on milkweeds and where I get my seeds, which is the Theodore Payne Foundation. And so I think he, he pretty much just took my information in and is running with it. Um, there's not much more I can tell him other than what I've said and provided for him online. So they are gonna use some, but they offered to use their um, seed growing uh, mediums to kind of increase the number of seeds that, that they would be able to provide knowing that we had offered them out and have been doing some native milkweed education programs throughout the gardens and, and including that into school. So um, they should be able to increase the amount of seedlings available ooh, by tenfold, to be honest with yeah. you. They, yeah, they have a vertical growing um, apparatus. Yeah. So, so it should be, be yeah. should be interesting to see what they can do. You know, they have a wonderful uh, you know, whole sustainability program. I'm wondering, did you have a chance, Kristen, to talk with them about uh, the college itself becoming a, a, a Monarch Way station? No, I, d I haven't. Um, I think that's might a good idea. That. I think he'd love a very that. good idea. They've been growing more and more drought tolerant, but not necessarily natives. Um, but if they could focus more on natives, yeah. then, they, then it would automatically be qualify as a monarch way station. Speaking of that, if anybody wants to take a stab at, um, you know, we've talked about the, the Main Street parking lot, like kind of out just the, the, the border between the sidewalk and where the, the car parking little curbs are, you know, just looking at that, that would be a tremendous planted area of drought tolerant plants. If anybody wants to take a stab at kind of creating a design of that, um, you know, the, I think that we'll, if we have some of those types of beautification projects, you know, creating like pollinator gardens or something like that in and around some of our gardens, I think that's something that the OSE would be able to kind of fund and help push forward. So um, I would yeah. be interested in taking a stab at, at um, laying out. I would actually, native. 
that's a great idea, Christian. You two want to talk to like about that. it and, and try to look at it? I think it would be I think it would be a really neat um, kind of little area for it. I mean, that's so drab out there and would really add to that area. Thanks. Sorry, Talia. That's okay. I just, because I was going to try to get some of that mallow out. I never got a chance to, but there's, I noticed there's a section kind of where you put the compost. It's that corner of the parking lot. There's, it's not concrete. It's the pavement, the parking lot pavement. Correct. That would make a real, like if public landscape could kind of break up that. Like no, I you said, have to look at it. Cause well, it would make. No, I know what you're talking about. I'm just saying a, you're asking public, you're, you're saying to go ask public landscape to do something. Or I'm, public saying, to, to, I'm saying <laughs> design it the way we want it and okay. we'll find the money and then okay. we'll tell public landscape. Okay. If we go to public landscape and say, what you think about this? They'll tell me suck an egg. Right. Uh, we got other things to do. I mean, they, I mean, they got they got tree wells that they have a problem. You know, we need to come with a finalized project that we can get done without getting public landscape involved. To be honest with you. Okay. Got it. But I know exactly what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about, right? It would be beautiful. Okay. Yes. Okay. I would like a whole redesign of that entire park. I'd like the whole parking lot to be gone. By yeah. The way, but okay. That's another story. Okay, we'll get there. Okay. okay. Um, Great. So Kristen and Chris, you two will kind of communicate. And Kristen, you want to start drawing out like what were you thinking? Yeah. Really, it should be. It's a, it's a matter of like taking out the 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 stuff and adding some plants. And as far as I'm concerned, I mean, you know, maintenance of it. I would assume we would be able to say gardeners would help maintain it, right? Well, it would be getting water to establish the the plants would be the most difficult part. Planting them would actually be easy but making sure that they get adequate water for the first year um, one, until they become established would be, would be the, the hardest part. Yeah. I think okay. we could figure that out. We could yeah. make sure yeah. shift. Of Great. Those. I actually Love think it. that's important because the mayor is really interested in seeing pop-up gardens in different places. Uh, and so I think this is a really nice way to even show at the community garden has what, how we're standing. And I think it, you know, if we if we focus, you know, it's an educational garden, right? On like we're, you know, planting, you know, native milkweeds and drought tolerant, you know, things and like what you can do. I think it's just a really good opportunity for us to bring the garden outside of the fence a little bit more, which yeah. is what we've really been talking about of of reaching outside. And um, I mean, it just it could just really use some beautification around there. I'm tired of all that gray. Okay. Okay. Um... Okay, so moving on to D, increasing gardening opportunities. So as we mentioned before, it kind of wanted to expand that to urban agricultural expansion. Um, so I think because we had made a motion to create increasing gardening opportunities, we'd also have to make a motion to change the name. So um, I'll make the motion to make it more urban agriculture expansion. Um, rather than just the focus on individual garden plots. Um, I like that name. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Okay. So that's all advisory committee. Okay. And so we had our first um, urban ag meeting. Um, There's about 10 of us. Uh, and we kind of talked about just changing the name. Uh, we looked over a matrix that we had done, God, it was probably three years ago. Three years ago, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, and a lot of the emphasis uh, was on um, where can we put more uh, individual plots in city parks? And I think some of the, the focus now has shifted to broader urban agricultural stuff. Um, really talking about the UAIZ, um, which is the Urban Ag Incentive Zone. Um, the Climate Core kids were really interested in um, joining that discussion. So they put together a presentation, um, kind of introducing that. Um, let's see, we also touched on, you know, the status of the airport park that we don't really know when that's happening. Um, because uh, it's currently unfunded and trying to look to see who is who is in charge of that right now. 
um, and some of the other urban ag opportunities looking at um, part, planning on the parkways, um, as Chris had mentioned, the uh, Climate Corps kids are really interested in, in focusing on that as well. T gave us a list of vacant lots for the UAIZ. So that's a, an action item that we'll have to uh, delegate for our next meeting. What am I forgetting? Um, Chris, do you want to add in what the kids are working on with? Well, I just want to say you all have been so gracious to the Climate Corps who have a, uh, and that's the Climate Action Santa Monica uh, project team um, or program. And the gardening team of the Corps this year really tried to do a, a whole lot of increasing gardens in many ways. But what really was lovely when they met with you and you really accelerated that opportunity such that last week we met with the community corporation, Tara Baruskas, who leads that, and they are now submitting for her a proposal. She was enthused about really getting the Climate Corps and any of us helping to develop, especially at some of their new places, uh, community garden type uh, plots for them and teach the residents how, how to maintain that. And so the kids are putting a proposal together now. So thank you, because it's really going to help advance mm -hmm. all the urban agriculture. And just one more thought, and they are also behind Eddie's Liquor on Pico and 20th. They have now started to build beds for an empty lot behind Eddie's Liquor. The owner of the store, or, or the property rather, said A-OK. -okay. They cleaned it up. They're building the beds. There are four beds, I think, going in there. It's right on Pico. When, when you walk up the sidewalk, you'll see it. So that's a really nice uh, example of we're all working together to advance our urban agriculture in unusual and wonderful places. Yeah, um, and Tara, we invited Tara to the next subcommittee meeting, which is on Tuesday the 11th, which is next week. Um, so hopefully she'll be able to make it and talk a little bit about the community incorporation. You know, some of the kids were looking around the city and finding these giant empty lots and um, Tara had chimed in that it's a community incorporation um, property. So that'll really help us kind of narrow um, what's available, privately owned lots and, you know, lots that are already in the city relationships with other organizations. So. And the only other reason that we should call that out is we didn't want to set urban landscape, urban agriculture in a competition with affordable housing. Um, so that's why we really wanted to collaborate and really see what's smart here. So, am I forgetting anything, T? Can I, can I ask a question, a public question about that? Mm -hmm. um, when I was on Parks and Rec, this was a great interest of mine. And I'm wondering, um, did the, has the city passed the Urban Agricultural Act enablement? That, and if not, shouldn't that be one of the first priorities of this garden committee to try to encourage city council to do that through Parks and Rec or however we make it up? But I, there is a state act that allows homeowners or property owners rather to forgo their their property taxes if they have a percentage of their property being used for agricultural purposes and there are lots those a lot of those privately owned lots that aren't community cores or even community cores if they're paying taxes would be eligible for those kinds of discounts on their taxes if only this the city would pass this enablement part of the act the county has done it but the city hasn't I think at this point, Alan, you know, they wreck and park, you know, they didn't, they didn't act on it. So I guess at this point it would have to go through the OSE if the community gardens brought it to this I think it, the city council. I think it's a wonderful time to reintroduce that concept yeah. and, um, yeah. and, and to really lobby for it. Yeah. yeah. And the, and the climate core kids wanted to be involved too, so that the city is hearing from younger voices. Better. Kind of great you know, that's excellent a little bit <laughs> so should, yeah. we, should, should we should we agendize that for the next meeting and add it on there uh yeah specifically right. yeah yeah okay i'll do that super yeah great. thank you all um okay so i think we're good on that again the next subcommittee meeting is next tuesday uh, zoom 6 30 i think 
So anybody who wants to join us, to, you know, just let them know. Um, okay, the last subcommittee administration. <laughs> you saw all the work <laughs> the administration subcommittee did already. So the um, permit, rules and regulation, good neighbor policy, um, all of that was what we worked on. Um, any other questions about admin? So I guess admin, what's admin gonna do now? <laughs> Take a break. Yeah, right. Uh, explore required hours. <laughs> well, no, I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. Um, that's another story. Yeah, seriously, they'll probably have to come up with some kind of, um, you know, have a discussion on how we move forward with some kind of appeal process for, you know, formalize that in writing. Yes. Sure. So that would be the next focus. Okay. Um, task force on the environment update. Chris. So I have two things to add. Um, they have an agenda, excuse me, they haven't set the next meeting. So that's the place that uh, you were all trying to get the UAIZ to come at the next meeting. And so I feel the need as a liaison, but sideways of UT perhaps. Um, I'm gonna, I was gonna reach out to James and, Sh and Shannon um, to get on the task force, the agenda of the UAIZ. Because if they, uh, as we all know, if they listen to the presentation and then recommend it to the council, that's going to move it faster. So that's the thing that I think is important for me to push as a liaison, and you maybe mention it with Talia as a, you know, as a uh, another you know, from the inside, so to speak, from the community gardens themselves. Um, and then because we report to the OSC now. Presumably, if all that's you know fine, we don't really need a liaison anymore. My position as a liaison started in 09 when we first established a more direct alliance uh, with the sustainability. But there's no reason unless we want someone to be at all those meetings. I'm happy to go to all the meetings. I'm happy for someone else to step up and go to all those meetings too, because I think it's really educational. But I'm not sure we need a special liaison, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, I, I just want to throw that on the table. We didn't have any connection before 09. And so my role was just to kind of keep us in touch. Um, we could still have the report um, if we decide we don't need a special liaison. So I, I think we should agendize that. Think about it. Do, do we need to you know, reaffirm that we need a li liaison? And then you know, offer anyone who wants to you know, I've been the only one so far. I'm happy to serve there if it, if it makes sense to everybody, but I'd love to share the wealth and, um, you know, get other people at that um, meeting so you're known to the community. Is that clear, what I'm suggesting? So just more of a discussion on the... On well, that we, we had actually approved formally back in 09. We appro approved having a formal liaison for the task force on the environment. And then um, uh, we chose me. I, I nominated myself and everybody said, fine. And so, the, and the task force for the environment was great. They, they welcomed me aboard and they, that's where we started really, you know, they learned more about gardens, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I just don't know, is it, I mean, it's not like we had to, I guess Parks and Recreation did have obviously the community gardens person assigned as one of their commissioners was you know, specially assigned. So maybe we do still need a, a liaison from the advisory committee. I just kind of want to formalize that because it kind of seems, so a discussion and just to reaffirm it or to shift it in a way. And I'm certainly happy to, to educate people about why you might want to be the person because it's very interesting. And you don't have to be the liaison to show up. These are great meetings. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have any other questions, comment, public comment? Any questions about anything that we talked about tonight? No? Okay, I guess last call. <laughs> I mean, if we're good, we can adjourn early at 7.54. So I'll make a motion to adjourn five minutes early, six minutes early. Okay. First time in a long time. Kristen seconds it. I think I we're, all, we're all good with it. Okay. Cool. All right. Thank, Thank you. you everybody for, for being here tonight.
tell you, is this your last meeting? Oh, you'll see me again. <laughs> okay, but everybody should know oh, this is Talia's last right. meeting yeah. as a chairperson. No. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, thank you all. It was um been an exciting <laughs> few years. So thank, thank you. Thank you all. for your leadership, Talia. It's been fantastic. Thanks. Well, you know, the partnership, you know, the group work has been really great. So it has been. It has been. A, I think we're in a good place, you know, yep. considering the state of the world, we're in a good place. Right on. All right. <laughs> all right. Thank you all.